Okay, here we are. Hopefully you can uh, hear me this time. Had a little audio trouble this morning. Working out the bugs. So I moved everything up to my office. I'm not actually in the lab, so technically this isn't a lab hangout. It's like an office slash listening room hangout. Um, you can maybe you can see my speaker. Maybe just back there behind me. Uh, so we'll give this a try and uh, see how it goes. Hopefully uh, the audio is good this time. Um, we are. Uh, I noticed that I'm dropping some frames, and uh, that means that the video will be subpar. Um, but I really didn't want to stream this in 480p. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I'll have to. My internet is uh, not very good in uh, the town where I live. So. Uh, let's see, I forgot what I was going to talk about. Uh, enough complaining about my technical difficulties, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Alright, well let's talk about the lab hangouts and what they are and what I thought maybe we could try. What is a lab hangout? Well, um, it's an experimental thing. Uh, live, unscripted, uh, and uh, I'm just going to work on stuff. I'm just going to do what I would ordinarily do on a Saturday and uh, work on stuff in the lab and maybe uh, show you stuff or talk about it. And uh, and if you want, uh, you can participate in the chat and uh, we can uh, I can answer questions or I can ask you questions. Um, and maybe we can uh, entertain each other and, and possibly learn something. Um, it's not necessarily instructional, just audio nerds hanging out, uh, but we may learn stuff from each other. Uh, that's the idea, anyway. Uh, but it's this isn't meant to be a, uh, a fancy, edited, slick uh, tutorial or anything like that. This is We're just hanging out. Um, not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to turn on the cameras and work on audio stuff uh, for an hour or so. And uh, so I'm sure there will be uh, lots of mistakes and goof ups. And uh, opportunities uh, to be entertained. I'll try to do this uh, two or three Saturdays a month for an hour or so. Unless I get into something fun and maybe then I can broadcast a little bit longer. Uh, all of that, um, depending on, you know, the internet connection and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what are some projects that I could work on? Well, I decided that uh, 2015 should be the year that I get some projects done. Uh, like many of us, uh, I have a lot of projects that have just been sitting around in boxes about half finished and uh, at the top of that list I have my uh, Bride of Son of Zen which is the balanced Zen line stage and I need to uh, finish that. It's about 75% of the way done and I'd really like to listen to it and use it and uh, I just need to get it done. I also have some uh, Amp Camp number ones. They're actually they're um, number one Bs. And I need to build those. Um, I have a. Uh, I want to work on a big sit amp. Uh, ever since, you know, ever since the first Zen came out, uh, back then I, I thought. Wouldn't it be great to build a really big Zen, you know, like a 50 watt Zen or a 100 watt Zen, you know, single stage uses uses big uh, 
big output devices and and I remember looking at those big hockey puck uh, MOSFETs and and uh, thinking maybe I could use those but uh, you know now I'm I'm working with uh, SITs and um, I just uh, acquired a couple uh, two SK 182s which is a 500 watt SIT and um, I'd like to try those out maybe we could make a a big uh, big light bulb amp you know uh, remember the uh, remember the Angaku the uh, that the, the single ended like 27 watt single ended amp uh, tube amplifier um, maybe we could do like a 25 watt Zen and uh, you know if, if we don't if we use a different load you know maybe we could get even uh, more you know a 50 watt or a hundred watt Zen. That would be kind of cool. Um, my B4 speaker project. Yes, I ha I um I have a B4 crossover from First Watt, and uh, and yes, it is as awesome uh, as you think it is. And I have a uh, I've had a project in mind to uh, demonstrate how useful it is. And uh, but it's taken me a long time to, to gather all the parts. I've got a lot of uh, I got a, all the drivers together, and uh, and I know what I want to do. I, I just need to, uh, but I've got some cabinet work to do and things like that. So maybe we could work on that. Um, I'd have to figure out a way to get a camera into the wood shop area, and um, and I I don't know maybe. Maybe working on a table saw live on camera is isn't a good idea um, because bad things can happen. But uh, I don't know. That's something to think about. Uh, a beginner uh, sit amp. Uh, you know, a lot of the sit amp stuff that that I've done and that Nelson has done. Um, the designs are really simple, but are not necessarily beginner friendly um, and uh, because of the voltages involved and things like that um, biasing uh, I have a beginner sit amp project in mind that's maybe just a tiny bit more difficult to build than uh, like an amp camp and so I thought well maybe this could be you know you know the, the next project for somebody who's made an amp camp um, so I don't know that's a thought I have a B1 that I need to finish I just need to stuff the board I've got the chassis is all done and need to get going on that uh, I have some gain clones uh, should I build them I don't know but uh, I do have some and, and I freely admit it uh, I've got some uh, not just uh, solid state projects. I've got a few tube ideas I've been wanting to do for a while. I've got a bunch of 6AS, uh, 6AS7s and um, I was thinking about doing a uh, like a single-ended Zen kind of a project with 6AS7s like uh, maybe to power a 32 ohm speaker or something use uh, I have like eight 6AS7s in parallel. Um, a 60FX5 amp uh, and a SEEL84 amp. I mean, I have some designs in mind for those. I also have uh, Stuart Yanniger's impasse parts. I mean, I've got all the parts to build that. And I just need to get moving on it. Um, but also you could uh, let me know what you'd like to see. Email me your ideas, mike at audiohobby.com, and let me know uh, what you'd like to see me work on or uh, what you'd like to uh, talk about. And then uh, there's some other stuff we could do besides just, you know, project work. We could do uh, a special Skype uh, or Google Plus uh, guests. You know, maybe we have a special celebrity guest on, and uh, they could call in uh, via Skype or Google Plus. 
um, we could build Nelson's next project live. So whatever he has in store for us next, maybe we could work on that live. It might take a few shows, but uh, we could build that live, and that might be kind of fun. And you can see me make mistakes, and yeah. Uh, tutorials by request. I don't, I don't claim to know a lot, but uh, you know, if there's something you would like me to do a tutorial on, I would give it a shot. And uh, even if I don't uh, know a lot about it, you know, I'm willing to research the topic a little bit. That's the way I learn stuff. Is you know, that's why I write the articles and stuff like that. Is kind of forces me to learn some of this stuff. Uh, we could do a Google Plus Hangout with an expert panel, so we could get experts in different areas and and do a uh, Google Hangout. That might be kind of fun. I don't know. Uh, we could do a mailbag. Um, send me your mail, and uh, and I'll read it on the air and. Uh, maybe answer your questions or you can ask questions or make comments or whatever it might be um, we could do reviews of stuff uh, not just audio gear although you know if audio gear manufacturers would like to send me things uh, that I could review that could be fun but you know it would since this is DIY it would also be fun to review other projects, um, test equipment, tools, uh, things like that as well. So something to think about. And we could do puzzlers. Uh, remember Car Talk, right? The puzzler. We could do puzzlers, and uh, we have we could do giveaways. I mean, I have I have items to give away uh, that might be uh, of interest. That might make good prizes. So so that that's the kind of thing. Uh, that we could do with this, you know, uh, every other Saturday or whatever. And uh, so let me know. Uh, you know, give me your feedback. And uh, there is a, uh, you, you can use my email address, but also um, you can chat uh, online with me right now uh, or whenever I'm live. There's a on YouTube. There should be a window right next to the video that uh, has a chat box, and you could say hi or ask a question or whatever. Uh, so there you have it. That's the uh, that's the the rough concept of a lab hangout, and uh, I will continue to work on my. Uh, technical issues because obviously I've got to get this all I got to get this working in the lab because that's where all the stuff is so um, I will uh, try to get uh, get things working a little bit better down in the lab and uh, we will uh, continue on but for uh, for this first uh, uh, dry run um, we'll just uh, do it up here in the office and uh, a, uh, a member of DIY Audio had posted in the forums yesterday asking uh, about uh, SIC and SIT and uh, VFETs and you know there there's some confusion about those parts you know confusion about what's what is SICK what are SITS what are VFETs um, and uh, well, ba basically, SICK is silicon carbide. It's just a, it's a material that you could make um, transistors out of, and uh, you could make MOSFETs or JFETs um, out of SICK, S-I-C, silicon carbide. Um, so it's a material. SITs are static induction transistors, and SITs and VFETs are uh, more or less the same thing, although you might be able to argue that a VFET is a type of SIT, and that VFETs and SITs are types of JFETs. Um, but I offered to, uh, I needed something to do for this test run, and uh, since uh, the question popped up, I, I offered to uh, 
open up a uh, static induction transistor and uh, look at it under a microscope on the show. So this is a uh, Sony 2SK82 and it, I've got a red sticker on there that tells me that this is one that I uh, blew up in the course of experimentation and uh, hey, that's going to happen. Uh, it's all in the name of uh, it's all in the name of science. So uh, this is a Sony 2SK82. It's an N-channel uh, VFET made by Sony in the 70s, and it's a, this is an old stock item. Uh, it has two terminals, um, a gate and a source, and a third terminal, which is the body, which is the drain, and um, and that's what it looks like on the outside. Um, but to see what's going on on the inside, I removed the uh, I removed the metal the metal can, and uh, this is what it looks like on the inside. And you can see there are uh, two chips in the 2SK82, or there are two chips in this 2SK82. I realize there is some debate about whether all 2SK82s are two-chip devices, but um, this one certainly is, and I'm sure that most of the ones that uh, that uh, that I have are two-chip devices. But you can see the chips and you can see the pins. And um, if we take a closer look, um, we can uh, actually see how those chips are attached to the pins and uh, get a, and see a little bit more about uh, what those chips look like up close. So I'm just going to switch to microscope mode here. Just give me a second. Um, there we go. Uh, hopefully you can still hear me. And I'm just going to slide that under there now. First, we'll uh, take a look at this magnification, and uh, that's a pretty good view. You can see you can see both chips. Try to focus it for you there. You can see both chips, and uh, you can see those tiny, uh, tiny wires that attach to the chips. And those these are four millimeter chips, and. Uh, I know uh, we have batted around the uh, possibility on the forums that 2SKD82 is two 2SK60s in parallel, but I I think maybe that is not the case because I'm pretty sure that the 2SK60 is a three millimeter chip. So I don't think this is two 2SK60 chips. Um, I think these I'm. These are four millimeter chips, and uh, you can see I, I made a, a black dot with a sharpie. That's the gate. And if you look at those tiny wires that uh, are welded to the gate electrode, they go down to the corner of the chip. And then the source, uh, the source wires are sort of connected in the center there. Those areas, you see those stripes that go across there? The areas in between those uh, stripes are source areas. And there are actually thousands of source areas, like 1,500, I think, per chip in this case. And so that's, that's the inside of a 2SK82. And uh, we'll see if we can get a little closer. I don't know how much detail you will be able to see in the live broadcast because because of video compression and stuff like that. Uh, 
hopefully um, the video I can upload maybe a uh, a locally recorded copy of this later, and uh, maybe the resolu you know the resolution should be good. Uh, but anyway, here we are. We're zoomed way in, and you can see the uh, you can see those wires attached to the chip, and uh, you can see that uh, unfortunately the light is a little bright, and it's hard to see the striped areas that we could see before. Um, those are actually uh, metal jumpers that join all of those thousands of uh, source areas. So there it is. Isn't it amazing that, uh, that th this works at all? I mean it's so tiny and those wires are so tiny they're like thread and uh, you know and they can yet they can uh, hold so much uh, voltage and current and, and uh, yeah it's pretty amazing and operate at really high temperatures so it's pretty amazing it would be neat if we had a uh, oh a thermal camera and uh, we could try to apply uh, electricity to one of these uh, with the top open and see if we could uh, observe the thermal characteristics because if we could look at the temperature of the chip and the temperature of the, the, the body of the device next to it you know we could uh, get the idea of you know get an indication of the that junction temp uh, resistance rather and uh, you know, stuff like that I mean we don't have a lot of data on these transistors and so everything we do have is just stuff that you know we've been able to observe uh, so there you go that's a that's a 2SK82 uh, what's one chip of a 2SK82 and uh, I thought it might be good to talk about how it you know how how these things work a little bit what they look like inside even more like going inside the, uh, the chip itself and so uh, let's switch back to the main camera here yeah okay um, first of all let's do this before we talk about SITs Let's talk about triodes. Uh, the way a uh, triode works is, well, first of all, it's called a triode because it has three electrodes, three odes. And uh, two of those are the, the plate, which is also called the anode and the uh, cathode and this uh, little v-shaped symbol is the heater and the heater in a triode is like um, it's like the filament in a uh, light bulb and when you uh, run a current through it it gets hot and it heats up this cathode and uh, the cathode has uh, an oxide coating on it and when it gets hot it uh, gives off electrons. Electrons boil off the cathode and if we if we were to apply um, uh, battery to the plate so this is plus this is minus um, and then we heat up the cathode with another power supply what happens is uh, electrons boil off the the uh, cathode 
and uh, head towards the, the plate. And so we have a, a current flows. So uh, it's one direction. And then some clever guy figured out that you could add a third electrode uh, called a grid. And you'll also hear it called the control grid. And it's called a grid because it, it, that's what it was. It was like a grid of uh, just a grid of wires. And if we take this, if we put this grid between the cathode and the anode and we place a uh, negative voltage on the grid what happens to that flow of electrons is that some of the electrons are repelled on their way to the plate they don't all make it to the plate. And the more negative I make this, the fewer of those electrons make it to the plate. If I make it negative enough, they're all repelled. None of them make it to the plate. So uh, the current flow is uh, off. And so this is how I can control a larger current uh, with this voltage over here. Right? I just make it more or less negative and I can control the amount of current flowing through there. So that's, uh, that's a triode. Now having looked at a triode Let's talk about the SIT. Okay, here's a VFET. And I'm going to I'm going to draw this upside down. Typically, you would see the drain down here and the source up here because the drain is the body of the device and so it's drawn on the bottom. I'm, I'm putting it at the top uh, because I want to uh, stick with the convention of uh, having the uh, positive terminal at the top. So basically an SIT is a semiconductor uh, device. It's not a, uh, a tube. Is a, you know, it, it's an uh, a, uh, an evacuated envelope, glass envelope, uh, with electrodes inside. Um, there's no uh, there's no vacuum inside this. It's um, it's semi it's all semiconductor material, and uh, and in fact uh, th this is, will uh, will establish that this is an n channel device. So we got some n material. And then the a gate made of P material. And check out this gate; it's it's diffused or buried in the uh, in the N material. And it looks a lot like the grid of a triode. And the way it works is I just like a triode. I can apply a positive voltage to the drain, which is the analog of, of the plate in a triode. And I can uh, attach the source to the negative terminal, and I can ground that or not. Uh, And once I've done that, I can bias this thing the same way I uh, use the control grid on the triode. 
I can attach a uh, negative voltage to the gate. And when I do that, these uh, PN junctions, the depletion region around these uh, P regions in the gate get bigger. And the depletion region is a uh, it's a region where no more no more charges can move. And so as these depletion regions get bigger, fewer uh, electrons can make it uh, through can flow from uh, the source to the drain. So much like uh, the control grid on a triode, uh, I can apply more and more negative voltage and eventually I can uh, cut off the current flow altogether. And the, of course, what what's neat about making this device out of semiconductor material is I can reverse this and make the gate from N material in the source and drain from P material and I, now I have a PNP transistor so I have a, a complementary device to the to the N channel device and if if you think about it that's why we we can't have a P channel vacuum tube uh, because if this was, uh, if I made the plate negative, it would repel the electrons. And so if I want a current to flow, I would need a, uh, I would need a supply of uh, positrons. And, it, you know, that's, of course, we don't have antimatter vacuum tubes, so. That's why we have uh, complementary devices uh, in uh, solid state. So I, it's kind of neat. Uh, the static induction transistor is uh, it's a lot like a triode. Um, it kind of looks like a triode. It's uh, the V and VFET is uh, stands for uh, vertical, and it's because the, the current flow is uh, between the drain and source it's it's vertical through the device so there you go that's a little bit about uh, how a uh, an SIT works and what it looks like inside and I uh, hope that was uh, useful The last thing I want to uh, talk about is just, I, I just wanted to show you, I got a couple of these uh, two SK182s, and this is a 500 watt device I was talking about earlier. Uh, and uh, it's a little easier to, to mount. So I've got some heat sinks and I need to, I want to drill and tap those and start experimenting with this. Uh, and so that's one of the things we could do in a, in a future lab hangout is we could trace some curves for this and, uh, you know, maybe build a light bulb amp and see what that's like, see what kind of performance we can get out of that. And then, uh, you know, just take it up a notch and up a notch until, uh, we have something really cool. Uh, so this is, yeah, it'd be fun to make a really big Zen with, uh, with these.
Okay, so I think that's, you know, I'm, I'm, that's where I'm going to leave it uh, for this broadcast um, because this is this is really just a test. Um, but I do want to, uh, there there is somebody that I wanted to, to uh, give a shout out to uh, Olav. Uh, I hope you are recovering, my friend, and uh, feeling better, and uh, I, uh, I wish you well, and uh, hope you're... Uh, back uh, back at the workbench soon and uh, of course I'll say hi to all my friends at uh, DIY audio and uh, thanks for uh, thanks for coming and hanging out and uh, hopefully with a little luck uh, I'll see you next Saturday so bye